All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Vantage Markets. So today we'll be looking uh, at the central uh, bank spotlight. So today we'll be looking at the RBA on the Reserve Bank of Australia. I just want to let you know we're streaming in uh, directly into the Vantage app as well as over Zoom. All right. So do not hesitate to drop your questions in the Q&A box as we uh, move along uh, during this presentation. All right. Before we start, let's, uh, let's just quickly go through the disclaimer. Right, please take note that the information, context, opinions which are expressed in this presentation and on the following slides are solely those of the presenter and not necessarily those of Vantage and are solely used for educational purposes as they do not constitute investment advice and or consultation on how a client should trade. Also take note of the risk warning that comes with trading margin forex and CFDs as they carry significant risks and is not suitable for all investors. My name is Ketan Ramachandra. So this uh, webinar series is brought in a special partnership between Vantage Markets and Everest Fortune Group, where we have been the finalists for Best FX and Equity Research for the following years, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Right, okay, so here's the agenda for today. Right, okay, so we had the most recent RBA meeting take place on the 7th of May, right, just about a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to be looking at the key takeaways from the statement, and also we're going to be looking at was there any shift, significant shift in messaging uh, from Governor Michelle Bullock, right? She had a press conference following this release of the statement. And then we'll also look at what does it mean for the Aussie moving forward, right? For the Aussie dollar. But of course, before we look at uh, that, right, we have to look at the state of the economy, the labor market, and uh, GDP output as well. And then to get a sense of how the overall uh, Australian economy is coming along. And then we can see how th that's likely going to impact uh, the RBA's decision making process as well as how. In, in, as well as how uh, it would impact the Aussie dollar as well, the direction of the Aussie dollar. All right, so let's start with the meeting, uh, well, the RBA statement, right? So basically, right, the, these are the key takeaways. Right? The RBA left the cash rate unchanged at 4.35% on the 7th of May, right? This marked the fourth consecutive meeting where rates were kept on hold. Right. Although uh, we are continues to see price pressures ease, the pace of moderation was uh, slower than expected due to persistent service inflation. So while the manufacturing sector has been uh, in contraction, when you look at the PMI numbers, services PMI has been pointing to three strong months of uh, output. That, of, of course, leads to higher prices as well. So when PMI output is strong, demand is also strong, which also would lead uh, or would cause prices to be remain elevated, right? So that's what we're seeing. Although the pace of moderation, uh, also although, sorry, the rate of inflation has uh, continues to ease, but the pace was slower than previous months. And this is due to higher service inflation. Right, the board members also acknowledge that returning inflation to the target of two to 3% is gonna be bumpy, right? So. Take note, the RBA has an inflation target of 2 to 3% on an annualized basis. And they have now realized, although inflation uh, prior to 2023 had been uh, easing quite significantly, however, coming into, the, into 2024, we have seen the first quarter to be quite bumpy with regards to price pressures. And that means moving forward, we're likely to see uh, not so smooth sailing with regards to the direction of uh, or to do with regards to downward direction for inflation in Australia, right? So inflationary pressures are not going to ease as smoothly as they have in 2023. So we, uh, we might expect a bumpy ride and that in turn would cause the RBA to hold rates at current levels, right? At 4.35% for longer than anticipated, right? And of course, there are also uncertainties over the lags that it, the, monetary, the effects of monetary policy can have, right? Right, the transmission... Uh, from higher rates into the actual economy can take longer than expected to, to bear fruit. So the RBA, like many other central banks, are adopting a wait and see approach. And instead of cutting too early, they'd rather keep rates where they currently sit and then moderate and, and then continue to uh, assess the incoming data. Right, so these are the key takeaways uh, for the RBA meeting. Right, and If you look at the cash rate since 2000, right? Or rather, let's just look at the cash rate in the last three, four years, right? It was sitting very close to 0%. I believe it was around 0 0.25 or 0 0.5%, right? During the lows uh, of 2021 and 2022. And you can see a very sharp rise in uh, the rate of uh, increases, right? It's a very sharp or uh, quick uh, hiking cycle. 
that's brought it up to about 4.35%, right? So, of course, this is not as high as interest rates used to be in the early 2000s to 2010, right? Remember, this was during the strong commodity uh, bull phase, right? So, we saw a huge demand for commodity prices and Australia being a huge commodity exporter with regards to gold, copper, and iron ore especially iron ore, right? We saw a big demand for that during that period, which uh, caused a lot of, which in turn kept the Aussie dollar elevated, right? The Aussie dollar was at its strongest at this point here in 2000 to 2010. Now, of course, 4.35% based on historical standards is at a pretty high level. And as we can see that there has been, uh, it has worked to at least tame inflation and brought it down to a slightly more acceptable rate. All right. Now we'll look at uh, the main points of the statement as well, right? There are three main points. Uh, the RBA focused on first, the first point being inflation remains high and is falling more gradually th than expected. So, right, although inflation is heading in the right direction, right, that means it's continuing to ease or moderate lower, but the pace is getting slower as well, right? So underlying inflation is higher than headline inflation and declined less. This was due in largely due to uh, services inflation, right? Which remains high and is moderating only gradually, right? With services PMI uh, continuing to show very strong output, right? This of course would keep prices in this sector elevated and naturally that has an impact on the overall level of inflation as well, right? The data continues to, uh, indicate excess demand in the economy. So it's still very strong demand in the economy, specifically for the services sector, right? And uh, coupled with strong domestic cost pressures for both labor and non-labor inputs as well. Wage growth has also been strong throughout the last 12 months in uh, Australia, looking at the annualized rate wage growth uh, was as high as 4.1% in the fourth quarter of 2023. It has eased somewhat to 4% in the first quarter of 2021 but then it's still at elevated levels. So wage growth is important as well because if wage growth continues to accelerate, that means the Australian consumer has a relatively stronger consumer, uh, spending power and that also would translate back into retail sales and into the broader economy as well. However, right, the RBA has also noted that inflation still continues to weigh on, on households' real incomes and output growth has been subdued. So we are seeing weak household consumption as well. Right, despite wage growth uh, accelerating throughout 2023, it has naturally, of course, not kept up with the pace of inflation, right, which leads to lower household consumption as well. Now, the second point is the outlook remains highly uncertain. Right? So in the, uh, in the near term, inflation is forecast to be higher because of the recent rise in domestic petrol prices. Right? If you look at crude oil futures, Right uh, in the first quarter of this year, crude oil futures. If you look at Brent oil and WTI, both have uh, uh, risen quite significantly this year, or in the first quarter of this year, which of course in turn leads to higher petrol prices or gas prices in the US as well. Right, so higher. This then of course we have higher than expected services price inflation as well. Right, so we're expecting in the near term, or the RBA is expecting in the near term for price pressures to increase due to higher petrol prices and of course services price inflation and then it will decline more slowly over the rest of the year so in the third and fourth quarter of the year we may see uh, the slowdown resume but at a much slower pace now inflation is finally uh, is expected to decline over 2025 and 2026 returning to the target range of two to three percent in the second half of 2025 right so currently uh, inflation sits at at about 3.6%, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or 3.7%, I believe, yeah. So they're looking at only uh, in the middle of next year, so which is basically 12 months from now, for inflation to return close to their target range of 2 to 3%, right? So it's still quite a way to go, right? Household consumption growth has been particularly weak, right? As high inflation and the earlier rises in interest rates have affected have affected real disposable income, of which in turn causes households to curb discretionary spending and try and maintain their savings as well. And of course, there remains a high level of uncertainty about the overseas outlook, especially on the geopolitical front, right, with the ongoing conflicts in the Middle East and in Ukraine as well, right? All these point to uh, elevated geopolitical tensions and also raises uh, the level of uncertainty on the global outlook. And the third point that the RBA uh, made 
load off, which is usually how they end their statement, is returning to tar- re- returning inflation to target is their main priority, right? So the board expects it will take some time, as we've seen in 2025 to 2026 is when they expect inflation to return to target, all right? And uh, they are also going to remain vigilant to upside risk. Right, the path of interest rate that will best ensure inflation returns to the target in a reasonable time frame remains uncertain and policymakers are not ruling anything in or out. So this was a fairly balanced statement, right? So on uh, one hand, they're keeping they're basically keeping their doors open, right? They do not wish to tie their hands to a future rate hike or rate cut, where else they're trying to sit on the fence here and try and uh, give themselves time by uh, announcing that they are going to continue to monitor uh, all incoming data and then make the next move according to what the data presents itself. So should we see an uptick in in inflation, then of course we may see uh, more hawkish uh, rhetoric out of the RBA. They may not ra- uh, raise the cash rate so soon, right? But they may switch to a more hawkish rhetoric in order to jawbone the Aussie higher, right? And of course, if we do see inflationary pressure starting to ease more significantly in the coming months, then yes, they may turn a little bit dovish or perhaps they may even surprise with a, uh, or they may even come out with a surprise rate cut, right? So the board will re- rely on incoming data and evolve the, uh, and the evolving assessment of risk. All right, now we'll look at was there any significant shift in messaging for the RBA? So basically uh, from this, point of view of the statement. The RBA statement was fairly straightforward. There's nothing new from there. There was actually pretty much the same uh, sort of messaging from the meeting in March to the current meeting in May. Right? So the statement offered no new clues. Uh, it was very, uh, fa- it was fairly well balanced, right? With the RBA sitting on the fence with regards to any future rate cuts or rate hikes. However, during the press conference, right? Governor Michelle Bullock had a pretty, uh, made some pretty dovish statements, right? So in this press conference of her, she leaned on the dovish side where she stated that a rate hike... Uh, oh, wait. Good. Okay, so before that, right, in the, in the previous meeting that took place in March, Governor Bollock stated that the rate hike could... A potential rate hike could not be ruled out, right? So she was pretty... Uh, uh, this was a little bit more on the hawkish side. However, in the latest meeting which took place in May, right, she stated that the board seems fairly confident that they will not need to hike uh, again as the cash rate currently sits at an appropriate level in order to bring down inflation. So in this case, there's a significant shift in messaging from Governor Balak during her press conference. Right, Remember in the previous uh, meeting in March, she said that a rate hike could not be ruled out. However, in this uh, latest meeting, she has uh, stated that the board not only her, but other uh, policymakers as well are fairly confident that they seem that they do not need to hike anytime soon. Right? Although inflation is going to be bumpy, the path of inflation is going to be bumpy, but they do not see any uh, potential rate hike as well. So they've, they've now uh, shifted to a more dovish stance, right? although they may not cut rates at the next one or two meetings, but it does look like they have shifted to a more dovish stance, and this is quite likely going to continue uh, in the near future, right? So when they have shifted to the dovish stance as well, this may put some downward pressure on the Aussie as well. All right, now what does it mean for the Australian dollar moving forward, right? So before we get into the currency pair itself, the Australian dollar, US dollar, right? We'll take a look at the state of the overall economy. Right, so if we look at GDP, right? GDP has been fairly stable throughout 2023 and also from 2022, although the rate of change on a quarterly basis uh, has uh, dropped below 2% recently, right? But overall, the Australia's economy has been chugging along pretty well, partly in due to the higher services output. Right, so when we look at uh, trade balance as well, trade balance has been fairly strong throughout 2023 and uh early 2024. However, the last couple of months in February and March, we've seen a drop off in trade balance as well. The trade surplus has actually decreased, even though we've they've seen a 
higher or larger outbound shipments to China's uh, to Australia's largest trading partner, which is China. Uh, trade surplus has uh, sort of dwindled, right? Dwindling trade surplus can also have an impact on the value of the US uh, Australian dollar as well, right? So that means there are more imports than exports. So if there's less exports out of Australia, that means there's less demand for the Aussie dollar as well. So should we see trade surplus uh, remain at uh, somewhat depressed levels or even worse if it goes negative, a trade surplus turns into trade deficits, then of course the Aussie is also going to come under significant uh, overhead pressures as well. Right, looking at PMIs, remember uh, we talked about the services active uh, services sector pulling up overall economic growth in Australia. Right, so when I look at the charts here, on the left I have the chart for manufacturing PMI, on the right I have the chart for services PMI. All right, for, for PMI readings, a reading below 50 indicates contraction, whereas a reading above 50 indicates expansion. So as you can see for manufacturing sector, right, for the manufacturing sector, for most parts or for almost its entirety of, 20, of, of the last 12 months, it has remained in contraction, except with the exception of uh, January's figure. January's figure registered a small uh, expansionary print. However, this was very short-lived and then it's proceeded to fall back into contraction again. However, if you look at so the services sector, it presents a much better uh, output as well. This sector has been uh, chugging along quite well. And especially in the first quarter of 2024, it has rebounded very strongly, growing, expanding very strongly in February, March, and April as well. Right, As you can see here, higher due to uh, stronger demand in the services sector, right? It has led to higher energy, labor, and of course, input material costs as well, which is which is then has a major impact on the overall level of inflation and also the pace of disinflation as well. All right, then when we look at the composite PMI, you can see that composite PMI has rebounded strongly as well in the first quarter of 2024, uh, moving up into expansion, partly due or mostly led by the services sector, right? So you can see a services sector has indeed pulled up overall economic growth in Australia, and it's also led to higher employment levels and also overall price uh, inflation has somewhat eased as well. But services is still pulling up the overall, uh, so services for the services sector, price pressure still remain elevated. Right, now here we come to inflation. So on the left, I have the chart for uh, uh, CPI, CPI data on an annualized basis uh, for every quarter. And on the right, I have the monthly indicator. So on the left, I have the quarterly indicator for CPI on an annualized basis. And on the right is the monthly CPI indicator on an annualized basis as well. So as you can see here, since throughout 2023, inflation has uh, moderated quite significantly, which was as high as 7.8% in the fourth quarter of 2022. And coming into January, the first quarter of 2024, we have seen it uh, decelerate all the way down to 3.6%. Right? The, the direction is good. The trend is good. It's moving in the right direction. However, it is still well above the RBA's target of 2 to 3%. Now, when you look at the monthly CPI data uh, indicator, right, over the last four months, it has been somewhat flat, right? It has been at 3.4%, 3.4% uh, from December of 2023 to February of 2024. However, it edged a little bit higher to 3.5% in March. Now, should services, uh, should the price pressures from the services sectors uh, spill over to the overall or has a larger impact on the overall CPI number, we could see the monthly uh, CPI indicator for the month of April probably edge higher once again, right? So this is the worry here. So on an annualized basis, uh, when you look at the quarterly rate, it's trending, it's moving in the right direction. However, when you look at it on the monthly indicator, what was previously a downward trend since, since September of last year has somewhat stabilized and it edged higher in March. So this is a slight concern for the RBA because should we see April's figure edge higher again from 3.5% to maybe 3.6 or 3.7%, right? This means that the RBA is most definitely not going to cut rates anytime soon, and they may even switch to a dovish uh, stance. Right. When you look at home prices as well, they're looking at, they'll be looking at home prices as well, right? Higher rates did help to uh, cause home prices to decelerate on an annualized basis, right? They were growing uh, housing, Australia, Australia's house prices, home prices were growing very strongly, right? Reaching as high as almost 24% in the fourth 
quarter of 2021 and then prices started to decelerate at a nationwide level since then and right and prices even contracted right in the fourth quarter of 2022 and in the first two quarters of 2023 however we are seeing a re-acceleration in home prices as well which is what the rba is also keeping an eye on as well so if we see home prices continue to accelerate uh even further right it means that interest rates are quite clearly not restrictive enough to curb rising home prices as well so this may mean that although they may not raise interest rates or they may not raise the cash rate they're quite likely to maintain it at the current level of 4.35 percent at least for another quarter or two right and you can see consumer spending has been somewhat mixed on a monthly basis consumer spending has been mixed uh, since the second half of uh 2023 right and then when you look at it on an annualized basis, it's actually trended lower as well. So you can see how household consumption has been negatively impacted as well. Remember the statement and the press conference both highlighted weakening uh, or weaker household consumption in Australia. And that's reflected in retail spending figures as well, both on a monthly basis and on an annualized basis as well. And looking at, at employment, finally looking at employment, right? jobs growth has been a little bit mixed since December of last year, right? Although you did see a, we did see a very strong jobs growth on the month of uh, February, but this looks to be more of an anomaly rather than the norm, right? So we may see jobs growth starting to moderate uh, moving forward. And what's worrying is this uptick in, in the unemployment rate. So in the third and fourth quarter of 2023, we did see the unemployment rate pick up very significantly, going from about 3.6% to as, four, as high as 4.1%. In January, however, we saw the unemployment rate drop quite drastically in February, which is a good sign. But however, we are now seeing this acceleration in unemployment rate once again. So should unemployment rate continue to rise higher? Of course, we may see job growth uh, uh, coming week as well. Now, should the labor market break in Australia, right? That means the RBA may move to cut interest rates as well, right? They may not need to see inflation come closer to their target of 2 to 3%, especially if there's a major uh, breakdown in the Australian labor market. Remember, if jobs growth turn negative, right, on a monthly basis, if jobs actually, if companies actually start to shed jobs regularly on a monthly basis and the unemployment rate starts to accelerate even further from 4.1%, right, the, the RBA may actually even start cutting rates even before inflation reaches its target. Remember, the labor market is going to, uh, provide a very strong signal as well as to how soon the RBA would cut. All right, now let's move on over. Now that we've covered the state of the overall economy in Australia, let's take a look at the Aussie dollar itself. All right, so here I am on the chart for the uh, Australian dollar, US dollar, otherwise known as the Aussie, currently on the daily time frame here. All right, if you zoom out a little bit, look at it on a weekly basis here you can see that since uh, May of 2021 right you can see that the Aussie has been in a, a strong downtrend as well right in the longer term downtrend the longer term trend is to the downside here right we see a we see a pretty decent uh, descending trend line as well over here so it's also important to realize how this currency pair is actually trading as well right in response to how what the reaction function of the RBA is also going to be. Right. And also another important factor to take note of is also what the Fed is going to do. Remember, currency pair involves two currencies, the Australian dollar and the US dollar. So we're going to focus on the Australian US dollar, otherwise known as the Aussie. We have to look at what the Fed is doing uh, in addition to what the RBA uh, has planned as well. And you have to look at which is the more dominant central bank or which central bank has the, has uh, adopted a path that's going to have a larger impact on the direction of the Australian dollar or the, or, of the Aussie, sorry, Australian US dollar, right? So take note, it's not, we're not only going to be looking at the RBA itself in isolation, right? You can't just look at the RBA in isolation, right? We also have to look at the other side of the table and take a look at what the Fed is doing as well. Now, if the Fed turns out to be more aggressive with regards to rate hikes, than uh, the RBA, that means we could potentially see like the Aussie even maybe climb a little bit higher, right? So if the Fed is gonna cut rates faster, maybe demand for the dollars is gonna, uh, US dollar is gonna uh, wane, while 
demand for the Aussie dollar might remain relatively elevated, right? So we have to take note of the uh, differential between monetary policy actions between the Fed and the RBA as well. Right, so you can see there's a nice descending trend line here that's been in place since February of 2021. When you look at the Aussie on the weekly time frame, this is a very important trend line. Now, should we see this trend line break above? Is it going to have a, a potential bullish breakout or is it just going to be a fake out like what we saw here in April of 2022? So take note, uh, structurally wise, Aussie US dollar, the Aussie has been in a strong downtrend, right? When you look at it on a longer term time frame. And this is, some, this is a major resistance point to take note of as well. Right, on the lower side, you can see there's a pretty descending uh, trend line as well. Uh, sorry, ascending trend line, right? So sort of when you look at it here, we see like a, a, a symmet asymmetrical triangle. It's not the best asymmetrical triangle, sorry, but it is still a pretty decent one to have, right? Although you can see the bottom of this wick here on March of 2020, uh, dropping below the ascending trend line here, or, but generally we see we have a nice symmetrical triangle and we uh, its price is converging towards the center of the, uh, to the final point of the triangle here. So this is an important chart pattern as well. So symmetrical chart pat, uh, triangles are difficult to call because you can have a bullish, it gives it, it there's no definitive uh, direction in where the breakout could occur. It could be a bullish breakout or a bearish breakout, right? But for now, you can, you can see the Aussie dollar, at least on the weekly time frame, is converging towards about 65, uh, 65, 30 cents, right? 65.30. Right, remember, so we have two very important trend lines for the Aussie, right? Which results in a symmetrical triangle chart pattern. All right. Now, of course, with the Aussie currently running into resistance last week, remember last week the Aussie climbed as high as about 67 cents, right? So it's trading quite close to its immediate resistance level here at 66.93. So that's where the immediate resistance level for the Aussie sits, which is at 66.93, right? It's about 20 pips from where it is currently trading. And of course, the second major resistance level for the Aussie is going to be this swing high resistance here that occurred on... December of last year, which is at 68.25. Now, with regards to the first support, we see a very nice swing low here, or pullback support level here at 64.22 that occurred on 15th of April. So very clearly, that's the first major support. And the second one is this swing low here that took place on the 9th of October. Right. If you can look at the Ichimoku cloud, let's see if there's anything. Right. You can see it is still uh, trading below the Ichimoku cloud on a weekly time frame. Let me see if I can highlight the cloud a little bit more clearer. Uh, yeah. There we go. This is a little bit better. Right. So remember the bearish Ichimoku cloud uh, indicates the general direction or momentum for this currency pair. So when the cloud is red in color, it indicates a strong bearish momentum, right? And with the currency pair trading underneath the bearish Ichimoku cloud as well, right? The cloud itself can also identify areas of resistance. So every time uh, the Aussie rises into the bearish Ichimoku cloud, the cloud itself helps us to highlight a major potential, a major resistance area. And you can see quite clearly the Aussie has stalled in this cloud several times, right? We, when we look at it, it's stalled here in the bearish Ichimoku cloud in April of 2022. It's stalled here and reversed strongly again in January of 2023. And here as well in uh, June and July of 2023 as well. This two is not so clear here. And then here, it did break above the Ichimoku cloud, but this was a false breakout. Uh, it actually got stalled at the descending trend line before moving lower. And now there's uh, two areas of uh, uh, resistance, right? We have the ascending trend line and the bearish Ichimoku cloud itself to identify a potential or major resistance zone as well, right? So you can see how the cloud and the descending trend line can help us identify a major resistance zone, right? Of course, resistance 
zones can be broken. We may see a potential bearish breakout, a bullish breakout occur. But as you can see here, this is a very significant trend line that's been in place since February of 2021. It would take something very uh, significant to break this uh, structurally downward move here. Right, This downward trend is a very strong uh, downtrend here. And it's going to take something major, uh, a major structural shift to see a potential bullish breakout. Right. So that would mean we're going to see the Fed be less aggressive, the Fed be more dovish, and the RBA be more hawkish. Right? Could that potentially happen? Right? Right? There is a possibility, but what is the pro uh, but potentially maybe not. It's not quite likely it's going to happen because when you zoom out as well, right, since 2020, since 2012, right, the RBA has been more uh uh, I would say dovish as well, or more aggressive with its e uh, easing pressures as well. As you can see, the Aussie has lost value as well as one time, at one point in time, where the Australian dollar was on parity with uh, the US dollar. And in, and briefly in 2011, it even went as high as $1.10 versus the uh, uh, US dollar. So, But since then, the Aussie has actually become much weaker structurally over time right? and has actually become uh, significantly weaker than the US dollar over this period here. Right, so this is a very strong structural uh, move or trend in the in the Aussie. So right, of course, we can see it break a little bit higher, but whether we look at it in the longer term uh, framework, right, the Aussie does look to be getting weaker, progressively weaker versus the dollar over time. All right. Okay. With that, now let's go on and see. What's going to happen? Remember, okay, we got the, uh, we had the RBA uh, release its monetary policy statement on 7th of May, and we've got the Fed coming up next month in about two weeks. So I think it's on, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be on the 11th of uh, June. Let me see. Is going to be on right the 12th of June, right? 12th of June. Uh, that's when the Fed uh, will release its monetary policy statement as well, and followed by Ch uh, Chairman Jerome Powell's press conference. Right, given that uh, inflationary pressures in the US picked up in the first quarter of 2024, right? Uh, should we see inflation, inflation remain persistent in the US? Right, it may not have to accelerate strongly, but it may just have to. In, uh, remain at current levels, that may be enough for the Fed to remain hawkish, right? Maybe somewhat slightly more hawkish than neutral, and that could cause the Aussie, uh, uh, that could cause demand for the US dollar to remain elevated, and that could potentially put the Aussie dollar on a downward pressure once again, right? So remember, we have the uh, upcoming date uh, FOMC meeting as well, but in between that, right, we may also see other incoming data such as PMI data, inflation, non-farm payrolls in the US that could potentially keep the demand for the US dollar stronger than the Aussie. So that means we may see the Aussie dollar here reverse and potentially drop lower. All right, okay, with that, now let's move on over to the daily time frame. We'll try and fine tune the analysis, All right? Okay, so here, first resistance is at 6690. That's quite clear here. Second resistance is the swing high that occurred in December of 2023. First support is here at about 64 cents. Okay, this is was on the weekly time frame, remember? But of course, there's intermediate support levels that we can try and identify as well. Right, one of them, the, another intermediate support level is going to be at this pullback level here, or maybe it's even an overlap. Right, this is a pretty decent pullback support level as well, or overlap level here for the Aussie. So we have a support level of 66.44, or 66.40, sorry. Right, so we can see since um, 15th of May, right, since last, last Wednesday, the Aussie has been uh, sort of consolidating between 66.40 and 66.93. So just trading within a relatively uh, narrow range, not so narrow range, but a relatively smaller range of about 50 pips or so, right? It's trying to find direction here. But when you look at it here, this is a pretty strong bullish move as well. Maybe we draw, we have a nice bullish channel for the Aussie over here as well, right? 
is tested the lower trend line of this bullish channel several times while running into resistance in the upper trend line uh, several times as well. Now it's approaching a pretty significant area here. We have this, remember this long, long term weekly descending trend line and could the Aussie potentially stall around here as well, right? Maybe it could, right? quite likely it could stall around here as well. And should we see the Aussie break out of this uh, bullish channel, that's going to give us confirmation of a major reversal for the Aussie as well. So remember, it's approaching this uh, longer term descending trend line that's seen on the weekly time frame. And should we see the Aussie stall around uh, 67 cents and then reverse and break out of this bullish channel, that would give us a very strong indication that uh, we have a major uh, change in the trend right in the near term trend and we're going to see the Aussie pull back potentially towards 6550. Right, so take note. The, okay, so the first intermediate support levels at 6640. The next intermediate support would be here. The next support level would be at 6565. And finally, another pullback support level here at 6470. And finally, the the first major support that's been identified on the weekly time frame is at 64 cents itself. So you can see how we've identified the various support levels as well. The support levels will help us identify uh, potential take profit levels should the Aussie uh, reverse, right? So any short Aussie trades that we may have, we can then use these respective uh, support levels as as uh, to, and use them to identify potential take profit levels for the short trades. Right, okay. So as you mentioned, the next resistance level here is at 68.47. Are there any other intermediate resistance levels that we can try and identify? Perhaps we can, right? Let's try and run a Fibonacci retracement from here. This swing high on the 28th of December, going down to the swing low here on the 19th of April. Let's pull up the 61 and 78.6 retracement levels. All right, we can see Aussie has already crossed 61.8, so that's no longer valid. Let's get rid of that. Let's just keep 78.6. So the next major, Intermediate resistance level could be around here at 67.61. Right, 67.61 is where the next major resistance level uh, could come in should we see this bullish breakout occur. I remember we saw a bullish breakout occur in April of 2022 as well, but this was pretty short-lived. And when you look at it here, uh, the Aussie broke above this trend line uh, for about three days but it was a failed breakout and it then reversed sharply to drop lower as well. So do take note, we can have false uh, breakout once again, right? We may, if that false breakout occurs, I mean, sorry, if the bullish breakout occurs, it may stall at this intermediate resistance at 67.60, right? Take note of that, right? Of course, we there's always a st strong possibility that we have a bullish breakout on hand, but remember any bullish breakout opportunities, right? We can use, the, uh, we can identify a suitable take profit level for the long bullish breakout at this intermediate resistance that aligns very well with the 78.6% Fibonacci retracement. All right, so these are the key levels for the Aussie on the daily time frame. But now let's look at something uh, on, uh, on a four hour time frame. Right, so if we look at it on the four hour time frame, we can see that the Ichimoku cloud has actually turned green so this is indicating a strong bullish momentum and with the currency pair itself trading above the ichimoku cloud highlights the bullish trend as well and remember when a cloud is green in color the cloud can offer areas of support as well which is what happened here in may of 2024 even here 9th of may of 2024 and also here on the 14th of may as well now as you can see the aussie is trading close to the ichimoku cloud once again the bullish ichimoku cloud this cloud could that help us identify a potential area of support, right? So with the lower trend line of the bullish channel and the cloud itself, it helps us identify a long opportunity for the Aussie too. And when I look at this intermediate support level here at 6640, right? That also highlights a, a major support level, right? So we have three factors that uh, help us identify a strong support zone on the shorter term, uh, time frame, right, which is the four hour time frame. When you look at it on a four hour time frame, we have the bullish Ichimoku cloud, the lower trend line of the bullish channel, as well as this uh, overlap support at 6640. All three factors highlighting a potential uh, major support zone 
for the Aussie and that helps us identify a long opportunity uh, as well. Right, so going long at the Aussie around between 66.40 and 66.50 may be a pretty decent opportunity to capitalize on this uh, uptrend here. Right, so should we see price, um, should we see this currency pair bounce off this support zone here? Then of course, we're going to target uh, the first resistance as the potential take profit level. So we have about at least a pretty decent uh, 40 to 50 pip uh, uh, take profit opportunity here based on this support zone. All right, okay. There's also a Fibonacci retracement, I believe we can use. Let's start, let's start this retracement here from this swing low on the 19th of April, going up to the high of last Wednesday. All right, let's pull up all the fibs. All right, we can see that the 23.6% sits pretty close to where the pullback or the intermediate support at 6640 has been identified. And we also see another retracement close to the other uh, intermediate support as well. So let's keep 23 and 38% and highlight these support zones as well. So you can see here the first sub major support zone on the four hour time frame has now four factors identifying a major support area. We've got the bullish Ichimoku cloud. We've got the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement. We've got this intermediate resistance at 66.40. And finally, we also have the lower trend line of the bullish channel. So four factors pointing to a very strong support zone here, which gives us a good opportunity to go long on the Aussie around here. And of course, putting the stop loss about 10 to 15 pips underneath the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement would be a suitable level as well. We do not wish to keep a very wide stop loss, of course, right? Because if it breaks out of this lower trend line here of the bullish channel and it breaks through the Ichimoku cloud, that means we may have a potential correction or reversal in trend for the Aussie. And you do not wish to have a very wide stop loss that's below the 23.6% retracement. So placing the stop loss at about 10 to 15 pips underneath this 23.6% retracement would be a suitable level as well, right? Without risking too much on the uh, on the overall trade. All right, okay, so that's what we have for the Aussie. Uh, let me check if there's anything to watch out for for the Aussie this week. All right, we're gonna pull up the calendar from Forex Factory. Oops, wait, that's next week. I need to look at this week. All right, okay, here we go. So here's the uh, calendar from Forex Factory for this week. All right, so we just got just the US and Aussie uh, economic data that's coming up. All right, so today is Tuesday. So we've got a few things. Uh, we've got Governor Waller speaking tonight. We've got FOMC meeting minutes coming up tomorrow. We've also got unemployment claims, PMI data in the US, and also durable goods orders as well. So more, uh, in more data related to the US. So of course, if these data points are going to result in uh, stronger res uh, result in higher numbers, higher than expected numbers with regards to PMI numbers or durable goods orders, right? This is going to in turn going to have a positive impact on the US dollar. So then that could potentially mean the Aussie is going to come under pressure and reverse as well. So take note, we have a lot more incoming data for the US for, for the second half of this week. And should PMI data and durable goods order come in stronger than their respective forecast, we may see demand for the US dollar pick up. Then that in turn could potentially mean the Aussie is going to stall and reverse to drop lower as well. So take note how the macroeconomic data can also impact uh, the direction of the Aussie as well. Right, and that would sort of that would sort of uh, come in line with the longer term trend, right? Okay, let me try and remove all this. Uh, right, that would sort of come in line with the trend because, as you can see here, the Aussie is trading very close to this descending trend line on a weekly time frame. So, should we see all these data sets, existing home sales, unemployment claims? PMI numbers, new home sales, and durable goods orders come in higher than their respective forecast or come in stronger to point to a very uh, robust economy in the US, 
then of course that would mean demand for the dollar could skyrocket, right? And that would mean that in turn is going to cause the Aussie to experience a sharp bearish reversal. So take note of that, right? So not only do we have a major technical uh, descending trend line in place to, to stall the rise in, Aus in the Aussie, we also have potential macroeconomic data that could cause the Aussie to stall and reverse as well, right? So take note of that. All right, so that's what we have for today, right? I hope this has been a great session for you. Uh, do take note that next upcoming meeting uh, that's going to impact uh, the Aussie is going to be the FOMC meeting that's up on 11th and 12th of March. And the next RBA meeting is going to be towards the end of June as well. Let's just check that out before we go. RBA schedule 2024. So when we look at the RBA, uh, remember we just had May's meeting conduct that conclude on 7th of May and the next meeting is going to be on the 18th of June. So just a week after, right? So we'll have FOMC. We'll have FOMC on 11, uh, concluding on 12th of June. Then we will have uh, following the next week, the following week, we will see RBA conclude on 18th as well. So do take note of these two uh, calendar dates as well. And that's also going to have a huge impact on the direction of the Aussie. All right. All right. With that, thanks everyone for tuning in to today's webinar. Do look out for all upcoming webinars by Vantage Markets. And I hope to see you all at the next session. All right. Take care and have a great trading week.